Hello everybody and welcome back to How to Play, the series that teaches you everything you need to know about a champion so you could perform well in the realm. My name is Rain Day and of course today we're going to take a look at none other than the God Slayer, Androxus. So, Androxus' first strength is his carry potential. The best can be so much better than you, and it just means that this champion has so many potential decisions to make that the players who make those decisions well should consistently dominate a game and a stat sheet. His ult is also a game changer, and it's always nice to have an ult that can two-shot anyone you please, and of course, hits in an area. Andro's ability to completely erase enemy champions in the blink of an eye with his accursed arm always makes him a dangerous threat. Thirdly, his fast firing rounds can be deadly up close. Many champions, with the exception of Ruckus of course, don't have the pleasure of shooting as fast as Androxus does, which means he's often able to get the last shot off in those crucial duels, it just depends on if he can land it. And lastly, his snowball potential is unreal. Sneaking up behind someone as an Androxus and catching them off guard can literally mean game over, as he does too much damage and fires too quickly for most champions to even react. One kill can easily turn into two, three, or four for the God Slayer, so don't take your foot off the gas after you win your duel. Go ahead and apply pressure onto other enemies, and that will make you a significant force in the game. Now that we've talked about his strengths, let's move on into the skills section. Androxus is a pretty confident dude, so no need for shotguns, assault rifles, or anything fancy. With his left mouse button, Andro totes a six-shot revolver that deals high damage from close range at a pretty fast rate. The great thing to know about this weapon is that it suffers from damage falloff pretty aggressively at range, so even though you can shoot someone from across the map, it'll feel more like a tickle rather than a cursed bullet at max range. This means he can pressure targets from a safe distance, but still needs to be up close to be most effective. Defiance is Andro's right mouse button and it's a quick three round burst from his revolver, dealing slightly less damage per shot but with one big win condition. If all three shots are hit, Defiance jumps, leaps, no, it skyrockets in damage, allowing Andro to literally one shot opponents at the lowest tier of health in the game. But wait, it's not as OP as it may seem on paper. This skill has reduced accuracy, so hitting all three shots without being right next to a target is extremely unlikely, thus forcing Andro into deadly quarters to hopefully kill his opponent quicker than they can kill him. Also, it takes three ammo, so two misses with this skill will force you into a reload, and that can be awkward if you're literally standing next to an enemy player who's trying to kill you. Overall, I find the revolver to be a more reliable form of damage, whereas Defiance can be a great move to catch unsuspecting targets by surprise, especially if they are stationary like a Kinesa who's sniping. Andro's Q ability is called Reversal. Reversal is a unique skill that actually absorbs all shots fired at him from his front side. Remember, his backside is still exposed and vulnerable to damage. After a little more than a second, he fires the absorbed power back wherever his cursor is facing, dealing a large percentage of that damage back to the target. This is a great stall tactic, as it will most likely signal opponents to stop shooting at you, buying you time for cooldowns to come up or to reposition. It could also be great to change the outcome of a trade, as landing the reversal damage back onto a target and following up with a very quick revolver shot can oftentimes kill enemies before they can react. See a Ruckus ulting? Well, you go ahead and reversal that damage back into his face and watch those sweet mechanical goblin tears fall. Another step is Androxus's main form of mobility, and it's quite a lot of mobility at that. He can dash in any direction, up, down, left, right, you name it, and he can dash up to three times in a row, giving him some insane outplay potential and some great getaway fuel. There's a cooldown to the dashes as well, meaning you can dash, attack, then dash again, shoot, then dash again. It's absolutely nuts how valuable this can be in an engagement, and it's one of the reasons he's so fun to play. Many players use this dash to stay airborne and get a great vantage point on the fight, but it's also great at surprising enemies and getting around corners as well. Finally, we're at the ultimate. When you hear, death awaits you all, run. Just run. Use your immunity, use your escape, use anything and everything you can to avoid this pinpoint accurate, insanely fast burst of damage. 
Andro begins flying and mutates his revolver, firing four supercharged cursed blasts that damage in an AoE. Having played Paladin since its inception, this ultimate is one of the strongest in the game and has the potential to turn any duel or any team fight completely on its head and in Androxus's favor. Androxus may not be the best looking champion in the realm, but this ult sure is beautiful. Today, we're going to do something a little different with the loadouts. These are the Andro loadouts I use, and they're not too different from his basic loadout, so you should be pretty good in starting off with this champion. But more importantly, I'm going to give you a really cool feature that was just introduced into Paladins from Closed Beta 33. Now with leaderboards active, you can check out who are the top ranking Androxuses in the world, or any champion for that matter, and see exactly how they build them in their decks. Let's take a look at Perdo's deck and copy it into our own loadouts. Click here, and boom. As simple as that. And now you're building a deck just like a pro. Only thing you have to do now is learn how to aim like one. Now that we've covered loadouts, it's time for the final section, the tips and tricks. So my first tip with Androxus is just an awareness that solo ulting another champion can be very useful. Winning a duel against an important champion can be a huge swing in the tide of the fight. One kill can lead to three or four much easier than you realize. Using Andro's ult to solo kill someone isn't exactly fighting fair to some people. But in my opinion, if it gets the job done at a crucial time, it might be better to insta-kill one person and win the last team fight based on it being four versus five, instead of waiting for the perfect pentakill moment to show up and never getting a chance to use it at all. Another tip for Androxus is to practice shooting while mid-air. It's hard, but getting comfortable shooting down on targets versus up is a skill that is so valuable to have as Andro. Being able to own the skies means splash damage cannot impact you, and it literally negates the damage of slow-moving projectiles like Pip and Eevee for the majority of the time. If you can do battle while staying airborne and mobile, you'll have great results. To be fair though, hitscan champions like Kinesa or very fast projectile champions like Cassie and Victor can damage you if you don't consistently shift your position in the air. My last tip for Androxus is to practice aiming. This is pretty much the biggest tip for Andro that I can give, as he really shows you whether you have good aim or not. The best way to dominate with him is simply to hit your shots, and the more you play him, the better you will get. Trust me, Birdo, Stolze, they weren't born with these skills. They practiced, developed their aim, and now are so comfortable with how to move their hands, it's just second nature. They also played Androxus a lot, so if you want to be the best with him, you're going to have to put in the time. Well, that's going to do it for me today. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video, please leave a like, share, and comment down in the comment section below about what you enjoyed. Of course, if you have any tips that I didn't mention about Androxus, you can leave those in the comment section below as well. If you want to see more Paladins gameplay, you can follow me on my channel, Rain Day Gaming. That link will be in the description below as well. And of course, remember to subscribe here for weekly episodes from me and all other video content news and updates on the Paladins Game channel. That's going to be it for me today. And as always, remember to never give up, never stop gaming, and we'll see you all in the realm.